Pull the whistle, the, the bell went for the players to come out. He used to get a match and a cigarette in his right hand and, and just creep into the, um, into the bathroom and have a quick drag before he went out. <laughs> um, but Mike Bailey, Mike Bailey was probably the hardest tackler. Uh, he didn't just tackle with his legs, he tackled with his body. And he had a pigeon chest and he was very, very tough. Derek Parkin spent a long time there uh, at the club. But John Richards and Dugan was a great partnership, uh, a strike force. Well, Arsenal, Bobby, full of names, full of big names. Yeah, it was. A, this is a strong Arsenal side, this. You know, Bob Wilson in goals, Pat Rice. Peter Storey was supposed to be the hardest man in the game at that time. He got himself into a lot of trouble, you know, with his tackling. But a good player, nevertheless. Frank McClintock, I think, was captain. Jody Armstrong, great character, Charlie George. Uh, John Radford, centre forward, and a lovely player, Ray Kennedy. A great striker, but a really, really nice lad and a good player. And, of course, number 11, George Graham, the... the the playmaker mm. of the team. 1971 then, the year of decimal currency arrived and Maggie Thatcher stopped free milk in schools. What a strange thing to do. Here we are with Wolves v Arsenal. The commentator is Barry Davis. John Radford and Ray Kennedy who get Arsenal away, playing right to left. They both scored in this fixture last season when Arsenal won by three goals to nothing and really that was the platform for their run-in for the league title, having lost the previous Saturday to Derby County. Coming back again to Armstrong. Still in, but not now. Off Derek Parkin. For the corner. John Roberts coming up fairly slowly. Number 10 there is Kennedy, marked by Munro. Bradford coming across, headed away by Munro. say, Bobby, looking at the old Molyneux, I can understand why you would enjoy playing there. Everything's right on top of you, isn't it? Oh, it's a great sound. Yeah. The, the atmosphere. Yeah. yeah. Terrific crowd. And they had behind this, this, the uh, terrace on the right, yeah. the, the, one of the biggest terraces I've ever seen. It seemed to go up forever and ever. I think they used to squeeze maybe something like 20,000 people in there. Yeah. The That's South Bank they called it, didn't they? You enjoyed it too, obviously. Well, you, of course you enjoyed it. You did enjoy there. the South Bank on a Tuesday. We no. were running up it. <laughs> Bill used to make us run up there with weights in his hands. And is now calling both players over to issue stern words. But again, the referee using discretion as a better part of booking. Now a chance for him to do so. Taking it away. And the linesman said in any way that one Arsenal player was offside. in that corner, goal kick. Linesman still wanting the referee's attention for something, and the referee's going to come over and have a word with him. Roger. He knows where the camera is, you see. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he watched it. Yes. 
Okay. The smile will come out at the end. He's, he's an unobtrusive guy, this referee, isn't he, um, Bobby? Roger Kirkpatrick. <laughs> I remember him as clear as crystal. Yeah. I th I, there's some managers, there's some referees actually thought, used to think that the crowd couldn't see them play, you know. And he was one of them? Well, I, I always used to, I used to fall out with him quite often. He was, he was always, always trying to take attention. You know? I always remember when I was at Preston and we played at Blackpool and he was refereeing and, and he, he pulled a muscle. And, and, and I don't know if it was because I was sitting in, on the touchline, but he made a point of coming over to me to ask me what he should do. You know? <laughs> and, and I said, well, I, I don't know what you should do. I've got enough problems of my own. I said, I don't need to, to be thinking about referees. He said, oh, well, I better go off then. I said, well, you better go off. And he, and he left the field. But he always seemed to be at the front whenever there was a bit of attention. <laughs> Roger Kirkpatrick, I forgot about him. Dugan in the inside left position. This is Richards. Bailey. Hibbert. Shaw outside him. Now Radford for Arsenal. Radford moving away right. And Armstrong quite literally beating himself. Ray Candy, but I was still laughing about George Armstrong. <laughs> he beat no, himself, didn't he? That, that was a great strike, that uh, Ray Candy, because he was a left-footed player, really. He struck that with his right foot, didn't he? Hey? Goal, he never saw it. Terrific goal, yeah. yeah. Right foot, that's unusual. Hey? What a oh, great goal. Picked his spot but, we were, but we were laughing at Geordie, weren't we? Oh, we were. He was in oh. two minds whether to hit it with his left or his right foot, <laughs> and he decided to fall down instead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a laugh at that when he sees it. <laughs> Ray Kennedy, 
and a beautiful goal too. Team which looks very nice, but isn't very nice for either the crowd or indeed for the players. And it's the Wolves to kick off at the start of the second half with the wind now blowing from the right-hand corner as we look into the faces of the Arsenal players. The two teams being divided by the only direct shot of the first half, scored by Ray Kennedy with uh, his unfavoured foot. He normally prefers his left, but that one went in like a rocket with his right. George Armstrong. Play there by Dugan. Runs to Radford. Got no help. Reinforcements coming from Pat Rice and Charlie George. Sure. Four four off Sam Nelson. Coming for it. Bailey. The call. Jockeying in position going on on the 18 yard line. Dugan. Little touch for Rock. Richards was surely held then by John Roberts. Referee calling it six of one half and out of the other. So you think that should be a penalty, Kenny? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can see he was trying to get, um, well, he was ahead of the defender. And um, he's tugged at his shirt. Yeah. And well, John's very quick in the box. Definitely penalty that. I can't understand it. When when Barry Davis said six of six and two threes, you know, yes. it's the, but it wasn't. One player's in front of the other, and he's pulled him back. Yeah. <laughs> Richards trying to make it, covering header by Charlie George. Dugan shot, side netting. Greg Dugan coming in on the byline. As it's called, although technically the goal line. Bradford. Shaw. Trying to flag up, free kick against Roberts. Very quickly taken and almost threading its way through. It's casual there by Sammy Nelson. This white star. Five shot and a brilliant goal. Deflection there, Kenny, or goes straight in? No, he was straight. He went straight in, did you know? Um, he was. He had a brilliant left foot, and I think he, he turned inside there, and um, it's exactly the same place as Rayford is. It's yeah. a great strike. Keeper's yeah. got no chance. And Bob's in there. Here we are. Yeah, he's just looked up. He was a great strike. He bent as well. Yeah, I think that'll have bent a little. You know, he, he could put a ball on a tanner from 50 yards. Really? Superb, superb left foot. Uh, Roger is looking at the goalkeeper to see if he's all right. <laughs> Bob Wilson when he's fallen, I think. <laughs> Crashed after the dive. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the man who scored the goal. Kenny Wagstaff. David Wagstaff's first goal of the season. Bradford to Kennedy. Armstrong. Right. Could go straight. Armstrong, Radford waiting in the middle. Here's Radford. Again, Park's not looking too happy with the positioning. David Wagstaff has gone down. Knock in the back. The referee wanting a new ball too. Nicely to play by one of the characters of the game. Wasn't a bad through ball to Radford either. <laughs> but Wagstaff is on his feet after all that, and we've gone back for the goal kick. Bit of virtuoso from uh, Roger Kirkpatrick, the referee. And 
a couple of birds in on the end too, of the Federal variety. Back right. Armstrong to Kennedy, to George. They wanted Park to come for it and he didn't and Barkin had to concede the corner. The understanding at the back in this Wolves side is not very good. Doesn't seem to be too much confidence. Just moved away, coming. Well, it was coming to Armstrong. It was McCannyog who got there first. And John Radford going to take the longer throw. And the waiters on the edge of the six-yard box. Graham for the back head. It was a bit too long for him. Still there waiting, and they're going to have to wait. That's a good ball from Wagstaff, but he's heard as he ran away. The ball with Hibbert. Richard's just ahead of him. Hibbert. Yes! So, Kenny picked the, the other corner, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> well, it's great left foot. But they, they, they've got the bit between the teeth now, haven't they, Wolves? Yeah. And, and, I mean, Arsenal are the champions and they are the cup holders, so they, they won the double the year before, so that, that's a hard pill for them to swallow. But a great strike, that Kenny. Great strike. Yeah, it was a, what a pass, what a pass as well. That was his and forte, Dave, and Beautiful. we always worked on that. Uh, no people say, oh yeah. Well, we did, we, I used to get on that right side all. And, and That's a little faint there. Waggy's to, uh, left, left foot was superb. Yeah, I, I think it was, uh, was it McNabb? Yeah. Or Sammy Nelson, I think it was Sammy. Yeah, it was Sammy that was there at left back. And um, I'd got him on his wrong foot. So the League and Cup champions. Yes. Double winners. Yeah. Arsenal will not be very happy about that, would they? No, no, they'll not be pleased. Two but of now. course, that's a, that's a spur, isn't it? Really, to the other side. Yeah. You know, the yeah. fact that you can beat the champions. You know. Oh. So the situation of last week, when Wolves came back from a goal down to be two-one up on Derby, has repeated itself. Question of whether Arsenal can pull back now themselves. Three defeats behind them, and a fourth at this moment staring them in the face. Kruger! Bit of a sandwich and good cover, he's made it! Was that a cross or was that a <laughs> Did he go for a goal, do you think, Kenny? I don't think, he'd, uh, I don't think he knew himself. I think it was like a cross shot. I thought Bobby uh, might have got an answer that one, but it was a lovely uh, sight when it hit the side net and oh. inside the side net. He took it very well, and he's got between two players. He's looking for a penalty there, Derek, yeah. knowing Derek. Um, but he's twisted on it, lovely. It just gives a bit of cushion that we needed. 3-1. Three, one. Three, one. Rodgers 
It has gone for Corey. Two of the players have gone down. And he seems to be rather badly hurt, too. Bit of a face of agony. I think it was a Peter Story tackle, wasn't it, Kenny? Um, what, when the, when the ball went up in the yeah, corner? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And when, it, when it was chasing, I thought, oh, no, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I've got to get there first, get me put around the ball first. Should have done what I did, let <laughs> him have it. <laughs> oh, I'll think about it. <laughs> no, it was too near the supporters. <laughs> um, we, got a, we got a corner for it, but uh, when you see Peter coming in, he's uh, quite primal. Yeah. Derek Dugan, yeah, I, I, I think he looks to me like he pulled a muscle or something. He looked that way, you know. He looked like a groin. Yeah, but he, he stays on anyway. Nah, he yeah. wanted a bit of... He's oh, enjoying this, he wouldn't want to go off after <laughs> no, this, would no, he? That's right. OK. Again, the wind will help David Wagstaff's corner curl in. Dugan is underneath it! Well taken by Bob Wilson, never took his eye off it for a second that time. And Jim McCallagher was always the penalty taker, was he, Kenny? Yeah, we, we'd share it if he wasn't in the side, um, then I'd take it. But uh, you can see there, I picked the ball up, because I, I might have taken the one, the previous one, um, but Jimmy watched out on the spot, so I forgot my old turns for throwing the ball. <laughs> but he was a great penalty taker. Um, he'd got this step just before he struck the ball, and the keeper sort of grounded, his feet were so, like, yeah. stuck to the floor. Yeah. But he had this knack of just turning his foot at the last minute and putting it out of the corner. Yeah. It was a great penalty taker. They haven't conceded four goals before this season. Previous to this, their worst was 3-1 against Manchester United at Liverpool. his knee as he fell, down was a little bit hard at that end of the ground. The referee not happy, he wants to uh, make sure that Derek Parkin doesn't want attention, or if he does, he's to go off the field to get it. There's Sammy Chung at the top of the picture. But with Redford about to take the throw, he's not going to go off Parkin. And they're off to one! Parks over the top. number two the corner on the left the ball having crossed over the crossbar on the left side of the goal as we look at it there's a jockeying for position Graham number 11 and it's coming to him McClintock completely missed his kick Oh, 
Dan Gedding, number seven. Got waxed off to his right, just behind him. Cross is going to be the better ball, and he'll get it from the corner. Bob Wilson peering through the snow, <laughs> flowing a bit. Must feel particularly cold when you've just conceded four goals. Graham missing a header. Richards has got the final touch and it went there. Duke getting a second goal. <clears throat> well, I, I thought uh, it was Derek's, but if you notice, John, uh, John put his hands up and claimed it. So I don't know what happened actually in the dressing room after that, but I wasn't I mean, too worried. It was I'm a great amazed with all the, the fans coming out of the ground. Oh, they were marvellous, the kids. Um, every time we've scored, if you've noticed, we go. they've come on. Ah, uh, yeah, Richards gets a touch. Yeah. Does he not? He doesn't get a touch. There we are. I'm going to say you got a good eyesight there, did you? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be in the books, whether he, whether he got to or not. But that was a great feeling. I mean, we knew we'd got the game at four, oh. but that one was just like the... Ashton on the cake. The fans were superb. The right, kids, yeah, there's nothing wrong with kids coming on the field if it's for the right reason. Of mm. course. Uh, they were they was because they were happy, weren't they? And no coppers uh, around. Hey? No. To, not at all. No. Not at all. Wouldn't need it. Okay. Charlie George giving it away. Just looks a shadow himself, Charlie George. Hibbert making the run, Graham, fine piece of play by George Graham, Hibbert keeping it in. Dugan waiting on the six-yard line, with Wilson now, goal kick. Bob Wilson, I think uh, one of the unhappiest men in the Midlands. Five goals by Stoke last September, five goals by Wolves this November. He's back in uh, shot again. Back Referee. Up, there seem to be a lot of injuries. Seem to be knocks and things in this match. Well, it's cold, and if you, if, if you don't you don't get the pace of the game, you know, and you you don't get your your blood cursing through your veins like you should because of your athletes. Um, you will get injuries like pulls and little niggles, etc. Mm -hmm. There's no way that Wolves will be injured because of injury or fatigue or anything like that. <laughs> they'd, play, they'd play all night if they could. But Arsenal, yeah, they, they've never got into this game at all, really. Yeah. And yet they had the chance. And you didn't mind the conditions at all, Kenny, did you, at this point? The conditions were so... I loved conditions like that. I think it helped us, actually. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I felt that at half time, with the, if it got heavier, the snows, it somehow... It, I don't know what it is about it, but we simply just took over. We just yeah. took control. Yeah. I mean, we played the best side in the league over the last year, being champions. And it was a great scalp for us. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. A 30-meter manager for sure will play it pretty close. in, Radford, beaten by Munro, George, Dugan, Richard, to McCannion, Richard going out to the right, Dugan is left, McCannion shot, Wilson well on his six yard line, Jim McCannion shot. The 
players really giving the impression they know it's all over. Bailey. Hibbert. Kaniog is offside, marginally, but he was. The linesman was right level with him. Couldn't have been very much in it, though. not surprising me from the shell hacking that was put in on them in those 28 minutes from the start of this half. Long one from right, but Radford is offside. From uh, George Waller to Radford, who's offside. A great victory for Wolves against a very, very good Arsenal side. Let's hear what Derek Dugan had to say to Barry Davis after the game. Oh, Derek, the first question, who said what at half-time? Uh, well, I think that it was something similar to the game against Derby last week, and Bill McGarry uh, put one or two things right, and I'm certain that through his tactical talk at half-time, we tightened up a little bit and went at them, and you obviously paid dividends the second half. Went at the man how? What about uh, David Wagstaff's goal, which equalised Ray Kennedy? Well, I think that I've been raving about David Wagstaff for two years, and I know Sir Alf Ramsey is not uh, one to take much notice of players or professionals. He makes up his own mind, but undoubtedly he's the best orthodox left winger in the game. And uh, I think that he picked the ball up there, and what a beautiful shot. I think that, uh, well, David does that. He did that against Chelsea last year, and uh, he can hit the ball. Great strike for the ball, very accurate, and uh, Bo Wilson had no chance and uh, it's a wonderful shot. It's something similar to the first goal of Arsenal's by Ray Kennedy. Well, we're going to argue about whether you've got one or two against your name, but let's uh, first of all take the one that you definitely did score. Were you surprised at scoring it the way you did? No, um, I do that a lot. Uh, I get on the left side quite often, and I just lifted my head a little bit, and I saw Bob Wilson uh, come out a little bit, and I thought, with a little bit of luck here, I've tried that about 200 times this season, and uh, it just sneaked in the far side, and uh, I was delighted, really, because uh, I'm not the strongest kick of the ball, and just I think it just made the line and crossed over. <laughs> he left you a bit of a gap there, didn't it? Yes, just a little bit, but there again, I think that he's got, he had to come there and, and narrow the angle, and it just went across him, and, and just went into, it just made the far post. Now, you've already told me I was wrong in my grandstand report, that you got the one that I thought Richard touched. No, um, Kenny Hibbert's got it, he's a great one for bending balls, and it completely went around George Graham as he went up into the air, and came around me, and I half hit it and it hit, the, it hit the deck and shot off there, and John Richard, I think, swung his leg at it, but missed it altogether, and I think it surprised uh, John Richard's distracted Bob Wilson there, and went underneath Bob Wilson's hands and, and threw his legs into the net, so I thought I had to get two. <laughs> well, you got two, why didn't you get three in that case? Well, um, uh, when you reach my age, 26, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, it's difficult at times, but uh, a lot of people said to me, well, why are you scoring so many goals this year? Uh, that's what happens, I'm a, a very good side, and we've just had, we've clicked the last, uh, six or seven games and uh, we've been struggling with injuries at the early part of the season but now the last three or four games we've settled down now and it's nice to see uh, an unchanged team we have only had this twice this year and i'm certain really that we'll probably strike out and play uh, such good football and weather like that today i'm certain it warmed up the whole uh, all the spectators today it was an exciting game and i'm certain that uh, the, the last two home matches for us against derby and arsenal have been superb games 